Hi everybody, Jeff here. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about some of the key costs and benefits of Monopoly. This video will be diagram free. I'm more interested really in application and key concepts. Here's a good example of a market which is essentially oligopolistic, a market dominated by five big players, the UK telecom service providers, the likes of Vodafone, EE, O2, 3 and Virgin Media. Now this was their market share in 2022 according to Ofcom data. And you can see that the top three, Vodafone, EE and O2 together, account for what, 72% of the market, uh, 96, 97% of the market, rounding up, rounding it, landing down, is taken up by five firms. So this is clearly a market where each firm has market power, has monopoly power in that sense, uh, although it's essentially obviously a good, an oligopoly, and big revenues, multi-billion revenues from the UK. Now, what about what are the arguments against monopoly? You might want to press the pause button if you're revising for this topic and maybe try and jot down a couple of arguments against businesses that have persistent monopoly power in the market. Uh, I'll go through some examples with you, but uh, take a moment to have a go. So what are some of the disadvantages of monopoly? Well, first of all, let's think about price. Again, we could use a diagram here. We won't. But can you visualize that diagram? Prices will tend to be higher and the monopoly than if there was competition in the market. Price well above marginal cost of supply, and that leads to a loss of allocative efficiency, deadweight loss of welfare, uh, reduced consumer surplus. So monopoly power, in theory, leads to higher prices, which causes a loss of allocative efficiency. It's a key point. Linked with that, is the second point on the screen here that high monopoly prices can have a regressive effect on relatively low income households. So if you think about households that are uh, spend a high percentage of their income, but they have a low income, if they're having to pay high prices for utilities, for food and drink, uh, their real purchasing power gets hit. And it may well be the case that monopoly has a disproportionate effect uh, on families with low incomes, low savings. The absence of competition in a market, if there's embedded market power, that can lead to X inefficiency, such as wasteful marketing spending. So businesses that don't really have to compete day to day will often spend huge amounts on advertising, on marketing, expensive accounts for their executives, first class travel and so on and so forth. We call that X inefficiency. Costs are higher than they would be in the in the if there was competition in the market if the market was contestable and my fourth point again we could use a diagram but the monopoly may get too big a firm may have too big a share of the market their output may go beyond the minimum efficient scale leading to diseconomies of scale which then causes a loss of productive efficiency so there we go four key disadvantages of monopoly notice that we're using key terms here Allocative efficiency, regressive effects, real incomes, X inefficiency, diseconomies of scale, productive efficiency. When you're writing about monopoly, don't forget to use those welfare and efficiency concepts. You'll get much higher marks in your papers. And of course, monopoly has been in the news. Um, just these a couple of uh, little news stories I picked up recently. Greedflation. This is the argument that uh, businesses during the cost push inflation of 2022-23, when costs were rising, prices going up, and there's some suggestion that some transnational multinational companies in particular increased their prices above cost, if you like, to take advantage of consumer uncertainty. So let's say your costs go up by 8%, you might raise your prices by 12% and take a higher profit margin. So greedflation could be a good idea to bring into an essay. And in the UK, regulators are now looking at this market, the market for baby formula, infant formula milk. Regulators should take action to curb a sharp rise in the price of infant formula milk after a survey found more than half of women felt anxious about the cost of feeding their babies. The price of formula milk has been going up. Many women, young mothers, for example, they will they insist on having the best quality, rightly so, infant formula milk. And they feel they've been hard hit by significant price increases. Perhaps another good example of greedflation. 
Well, to evaluate, what are some of the potential advantages of having a monopoly supplier? So again, if you want to press the pause button, take a moment, maybe can you jot down two, possibly three potential counterpoints, benefits or advantages of monopoly supply? Well, let me give you five. First of all, it comes of scale. So it comes of scale associated with large businesses, large scale production. Again, there could be a diagram for this, but it comes of scale can lead to lower unit costs and therefore, in theory, lower prices for consumers. Now, for the monopoly to charge a lower price than under competition, those scale economies have to be pretty substantial, but it can and does happen. A second point is that in highly profitable businesses, it may well be the case in oligopolies, telecoms, pharmaceuticals, for example, the high monopoly profit, supernormal profit, can be used to fund research and development spending, which in turn might accelerate product and process innovation, which in turn improves dynamic efficiency. These are the biggest R&D spenders in the world in the pharmaceutical sector. So these are the big pharma businesses, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Novartis, Merck, etc., AstraZeneca in the UK, GlaxoSmithKline. The black area shows their R&D spend, and the blue is the sales from prescription drugs. Pfizer, for example, $91 billion of sales from drugs in 2022, it does spend $12 billion a year on research and development. So that's a good industry to use as application for the use of monopoly profit. Third argument is that uh, the government might get a fiscal dividend from high tax revenues. So high profits, in theory, can lead to higher tax revenues for the government. Although, of course, there's the big issue of profit shifting, of tax avoidance, of transfer pricing by multinational corporations in particular. Fourth argument I think is really quite interesting and quite important. Uh, monopoly firms, they don't always have to charge one price. They don't. So they may engage in cross-subsidies. So you might use the profits from one part of a business to lower prices for social beneficial uses in other markets. So, for example, cross-subsidies in terms of cheaper bus fares in for, for older people, uh, medical companies charging a lower price for vaccines in low-income countries. Quite a few people now talking about social tariffs where you might offer a lower tariff, a lower charge for people on low incomes or unemployed people, for example, during the cost of living crisis. And crucially, and this is goes back to my argument that macroeconomics has micro foundations, fully scaled monopolies can improve a country's export competitiveness. So don't, don't forget that you need businesses operating at scale to become successful exporters. And so you might have to sacrifice or trade off a monopoly power for export success. And of course, exports are an injection of aggregate demand, creating jobs, foreign exchange and tax revenues. That slide, I think, is quite a good slide if you want to take a screenshot. Those are five really quite important potential advantages of monopoly power. Now, it's really important if you get an exam question on monopoly, very common, of course. Judge a monopoly on a case-by-case -case basis. Have your theories to hand, have your key points to hand, but really do apply those ideas to the context, the case study you're given. A firm can have market power, but not necessarily act like a monopolist, particularly in a contestable market where the threat of competition can be enough to change pricing decisions, for example. And link this back to, if you've done some revision on price discrimination, charging different prices for the same product, that in theory can also be socially beneficial. There we go. I hope you found this video useful on the costs and benefits of monopoly. Take care and see you soon.